Hi folks, I'm Don Meisner, and I'm here on Tupper Lake, yes, Tupper Lake in the middle of the beautiful Adirondacks, for a special day where the DEC is going to be stocking landlocked salmon and lake trout. And I think those are some of their boats behind me. Uh, we've got perfect weather, but here's what's interesting. There aren't many lakes that can support these kind of fish. The lake has to be deep, has to be cold, it has to have the right amount of oxygen and Tupper Lake has it all. It's over 28 miles of shoreline, and it reaches depths of over 100 feet. But to have these lakers lurking in the depths, while you're fishing for bass in northern along the shallow shoreline, my goodness, the opportunities and the fishing enjoyment that you can have here, I don't think can be rivaled by many places in this country. I'm here speaking with Bobby Helms as we're getting ready to put these fish here in Tupper Lake, but Bobby knows an awful lot more about it than I do. So first of all, is this a big day, putting these fish in here? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is the second year we've done it, and we noticed last year we started catching a few more salmon, just because they're not just dumping them right in the water. We're plant deep water planting them, so they're right where Well, what they does that mean, be. deep water planting them? We're putting them where they should live as adult fish okay and where the smelt is where all the bait is and so there's less predation for them because there's we're putting them in 50 to almost 100 feet of water so they can just disappear because they're just they're like seven to nine inches so they just how long will it take them in this lake with the smelt that's here to reach a size that fishermen would be fishing for them I'd say a couple years they eat very well here they're very well fed the smelt populations massive um, it's it's amazing you see it on the depth finder and you'll see clouds that are have to be billions of smelt strong is that right yeah. well smelt is the major food of both the lake trout and the salmon isn't yep. it here yeah that's uh it's the forage base for pretty much every species of fish here when we troll deep in the summer for the lakers and the salmon a lot of times we catch 36 to 40 inch northerns big walleyes we'll catch five, six pound small mouths 45 feet down in the summer. Okay, that brings up an interesting point. These fish you're talking about, which are trophy and, and highly sought after fish by fishermen all over, how much do they play a role in the predator uh, scale for these salmon and these small lake trout? Oh, they they have to eat them. They, There's they, no they doubt. Must, they must love yeah, them. Lakers don't, Lakers don't care. I've caught Lakers in here that are eight, nine pounds and they've got Cisco tails sticking out of their throat and they're still hitting. Really? I've had salmon out here vomit up fist-sized piles of smelt and still take a spoon is while that, we're trolling. Is that right? Yeah. There's a lot of activity going on around us right now and, and I take it that all these boats that have come here are going to volunteer to help disperse these fish. Is that what's going on? We did it uh, last year for the first time with 3,000 landlocked salmon. And uh, we know that we have to put the salmon in as quickly as we can. Although they're only coming from down the street, Lake Clear Fish Hatchery, Adirondack Fish Hatchery, we know that once they're out of that truck, we've got to get them in as quickly as we can. In the old days, the department used to just move their trucks out to a pump house that you can see over in that direction mm -hmm. and put their tube in the lake and flush them into the lake. The difficulty with that was it's flat as a pancake in front of the pump house. It only reaches a depth of about 30 feet, 400 yards out, and it was like ringing a dinner wow, bell wow. for the bass and their bass in here, and the walleye and their walleye in here. And they're probably, probably going to be a, a state record walleye caught here in the next couple of years. And of course, Esox, the Nord, that yeah, terrible. You know, I love Northern Pike. They're so. terrible, slimy. Toothy critters, toothy critters that, and they never come in the boat of a salmon fisher. Oh, okay. Never. Well, you, as you can tell now, you've got the elite. You, although we no, all no, think no, we all think no. we're the elite. No, the no. The northern pike fishermen think they're an elite. No. But anyway, trout and salmon are really special. They're, they're really what the legends of the Northeast have been made of, from, from Maine all the way down to New Hampshire and the Adirondacks uh, here in New York. And so uh, I'm just thrilled to be part of this whole thing and be part well, of the development and growth of Tupper Lake. You know, um, there's a little self-interest in it for us. We, of course, want these fish to survive. The department has put 
tons of person hours into growing them, tons of money into um, uh, funding all of our uh, stock stocking programs and funding uh, the Adirondack Cultural Fish Station and the Adirondack uh, Chateauguay, where the lake trout come from. We just want them to have a chance to survive, and, and that's why it's in our self-interest to come out here and volunteer to plant them in deep water rather than just have a tube go into the lake and have them become a buffet for, for your slimy, toothy critters. One final thought that comes out. Of, of these 3,000 salmon that you're putting in today, yep. what, what is the survival projection or, or percentage? You'd have to ask someone that knows a lot more about it than I do. What I've read, and I've done a lot of reading since I don't have anything else to do anymore except <laughs> hunt and fish. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> um, between 30 and 50% mortality. Yeah. Um, where people fish them, um, it's higher than that if you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's so, interesting. So my advice to everybody out there that may be watching this is come on to Tupper Lake. Um, we have a very good fishery. You may not catch a fish, but when you do, you'll remember it for the rest of your life. In years okay. past, Thank you. What they would do is they would just dump all of these fish through a tunnel right here next to shore and the fish would have to disperse. By having the volunteer boats come in, they can take the nets, put them in their, their coolers or whatever they have filled with fresh water to be able to take them out a quarter of a mile and dump them. So that's a process that's going on right now, is we're taking each individual boat and putting as many salmon as we can that, that, that are safe to be in there into their uh, reservoirs. We're beginning our exciting journey now to the, the magic hole where all these salmon, if you could tell right now where we're going, then you've got one up on everybody else and you know where all these salmon are gonna call home right now. Now, of course, that's a joke, but in any event, it's gonna be fun to see, see them go to their new home. hit our spot where we're going to put these fish in and uh, this is pretty exciting really what a beautiful boat ride too this is their new home 